watching this, you want to be spoiled. I'm going to give you an extra five seconds to change your mind. Because I'm going to be spoiling Star Wars The Force Awakens. You've got five seconds starting now. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, if you're still watching this, you want to be spoiled. I'm saving the big spoiler for last. Here's the little spoilers. First off, the plot is Everybody's looking for Luke Skywalker. Where has Luke Skywalker been? Are you kidding me, J.J. Abrams? We have to wait to see Luke Skywalker. Okay, so. Here is a quick synopsis of the movie. Within the first 20 minutes, if you looked at my my you know non-spoiler review, I told you within the first 20 minutes you meet Ray, Finn, Poe, and Kylo Ren. Okay, what I didn't tell you is that Finn used to be a storm. Well, no, I kind of told you Finn used to be a stormtrooper because if you've seen the trailers, you know that Finn used to be a spoiler. For all you wondering, Finn, he's the black guy. Okay. Side note, for all you people complaining, seriously, you're complaining that, okay, I'm not even going to race or politics or any of that. Deal with it, people. He did a good job. For all you people complaining that there's no, there's a female wielding a lightsaber, go look at the original trilogy, go look at the cartoons. Women have been Jedis. Deal with it. I don't care that much. I wanted a good movie, and I got it. Back to the plot. So Poe is on a planet, Jankou. Poe has the map to find Luke Skywalker. Enter Kylo Ren with stormtroopers. Execution style, the whole village captures Poe. Poe puts the map to cut to Luke Skywalker in BB-8. BB-8 goes flying. And then on the First Order starship, Finn helps Poe escape. Back on the planet, BB-8 runs into Rey, who's a scavenger. And they and Rey can communicate with BB-8. Okay, fine, whatever. Star Wars. Weirder things have happened, like Jar Jar Binks. So, I mean, and then Finn escapes back onto Jakku, where he runs into Rey, and they're like, oh my god, you know, the First Order is here, they're here to get me, blah blah blah, the Resistance, I'm part of the Resistance, blah blah blah, enter the Millennium Falcon. Place went crazy. They get captured by Han Solo and Chewie, place went crazy. I mean, this whole movie seriously tugged on every emotional heartstring that I had, and they did a great job in doing it. Here's my one issue. This movie relied partially on nostalgia to get people to see the movie, which was one of my issues. Which was an issue I had with X-Men Days of Future Past, which is they wanted, you know, Brian Singer to come on, and then we had to get Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, Anna Paquin, um, you know, Kelsey Grammer, Fab K. Janice, and, you know, all these people. Same thing happened on Star Wars The Force Awakens. They, they got, you know, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, and Mark Hamill to reprise their roles. And, you know, it fit the story. And it did a good job of that. But, you know, I, I think they, they relied too heavily on it. I mean, but with the way they did it, you know, it worked out. It, it's not the end of the world. This was still a good movie. You could not have done it without them. Because this movie was a passing of the torch movie. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that that's what this movie is, was, and forever shall be, is a, here's the next trilogy. I mean, 
So, with that in mind, um, here's your... I mean, you, you learn through the movie that Kylo Ren is Han and Leia's son. <laughs> and Kylo Ren is the bad guy with big, huge, broadsword lightsaber, which people were complaining about. You know what? It serves a purpose. It does. It's, the, it's it, you know, it's... <sighs> You see it, you know, you, you think that this, the part right here would be a guard, but no, he actually uses it in a couple instances, which was good, good on him. Um, what else was there? I mean, there was, oh, Jesus, who, yeah. So, you find out that Kylo Ren isn't the main bad guy. He's taking orders from Supreme Leader Snock. Snook, Snock, played by Andy Serkis, and the way you're introduced to him is this. Let me let me give you an example. Say, for example, this is Kylo Ren. Da, 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 da. Um, sure. This is Snock. See the size difference? Your Snock. And the worst part was he's a hologram the whole time. You sit there thinking, believing that this is actually who he is, but no, it's a hologram. We haven't actually physically met him. We've just met a hologram of him. But you know, is he Sith? Who knows? But the dark side is within Kylo Ren, and there's a very dramatic scene in this movie between Han and Kylo Ren, and. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your big spoiler for the movie. I'm going to give you another few seconds to stop this. Stop this video if you don't want to be spoiled. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. So here's Han and Kylo Ren sitting there talking. And, you know, Kylo Ren's like, I, I need to do this one thing in order to transcend and to continue to do what I do. And Han's like, I understand. I can help you. Let's do it together. We can do it together. And Kylo Ren's like, thank you. And, oh, Han Solo dies. Oh, my God. Han Solo dies. I mean, talk about emotional. Um. It, it truly was a very sad, like, my jaw was open the whole time. Like, <gasps> I completely went to this movie not knowing anything. I mean, it's just like, <gasps> oh my god, man. That's going to suck for Chewie and Leia. It's just, oh, my heart just, oh, just, just oh, cut it out Take it, J.J. Abrams. I mean, really. Unbelievable. Um, also, you had, you know, and of course the good guys win. You know, it, it, here's another big, huge thing from this movie. You thought the Death Star was gnarly, man. This thing, this new Star Destroyer thing that they have is like 50,000 times bigger than the Death Star. But lo and behold, you know, the good guys win, the Resistance wins. R2-D2 wakes up, and he's got the other half of the map leading to Luke Skywalker. And the whole time you're thinking, oh my god, you know, Finn and Kylo Ren, these two are going to be, you know, fighting it out, and Finn's going to be the next Jedi, and what happens? Ray kicks ass and becomes the next That was, I seriously, after seeing all these trailers and everything like that, I seriously thought Finn was going to be, you know, another Jedi. That, you know, oh, I don't know I'm a Jedi. How do I become a No. No, Finn, you're not a Jedi. You're cannon fodder. Because he's left at the end of this movie in a coma, I'm assuming. And Ray and Chewie hop in the Millennium Falcon, follow the map, the, literally the last five like maybe 15 minutes of this movie is Ray landing on a planet, walking up 
a gorgeous, gorgeous scenery, by the way. Just beautiful ocean and islands, you know. And this, and this, this is very symbolic. Very, very, very um, archetypal, you know, traveling, journeying, the emotional, you know, climb, if you will. And there's Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker with his robotic hand and beard. And that's the end of the movie. Oh my god. Um, that is your spoiler review of this movie. Again, eight and a half, nine out of ten I give this movie because there were some things that, you know, the nostalgia stuff, there was the thing with, what's her name? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, uh, Captain Phasma, who was a big deal, who everybody made out to be a big deal, but wasn't really in this movie, but... If you read online, the next few movies she's gonna be bigger and badder. But she was captured in this movie, and that was it. Um, big deal. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, go see this movie. Go see this movie. Um, if you've seen this movie, you want to let me know how you felt. Email, leave a comment, like, thumbs up, all that jargon. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Now we have to wait two years for episode eight. Just talking about it just drains me. SLB. Peace out. I'm going to go take a nap. Just, just talking about the movie literally drains you. I'm tired.